Hello there monsters and men, ladies and people, and welcome to Recharging. It is time for another range test, and this time with the BYD Auto 3. A BYD what? What is a BYD? Well, BYD, there's a truck. BYD is the biggest electric car maker in the world. Yep, they are huge. And this Auto 3 is one of the first models here in Europe. But soon, more will follow. What kind of car is the Eto3 then? Well, it is a crossover and the Eto3 is about the same size as the Kia Nero EV. The Eto3 has a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack and according to the WLTP, it can do 420 kilometers on a single charge. And from my experience the last few days, I have good faith that it can do that. You know the drill, I will do one test at 90 kilometers per hour to simulate those mixed driving conditions and I will do one test at 130 km per hour. The conditions today are pretty much perfect. It is 18 degrees Celsius right now, and I think at the end of the test it will be around 15 degrees, and there is barely any wind. So again, almost perfect conditions for this Eto3. The car is already charged, so let's go. All right, it is time for a first update because I have driven at least 50 kilometers. And why can I only give you an update after I have driven at least 50 kilometers? Well, Chinese software. I have to admit though, the infotainment system is really impressive. The snappiness, the responsiveness, it is on a Tesla level. And it is what you expect from an infotainment system in 2023. But it still has a few Chinese quirks. And one of them is your trip meter for your average consumption. Because you have two of those trip meters, but one for your average total like ever since the car was new. And you have one for the past 50 kilometers. But it is literally the past 50 kilometers. So if you reset that trip meter and you drive for 25 kilometers, then you don't have an accurate result. Because what it does is it counts the consumption over the 25 kilometers. But the remaining 25 kilometers of the 50 kilometers it sees that as a consumption of zero, of zero kilowatt hours. So the average consumption is not accurate. You have to wait until you have driven 50 kilometers to get an accurate result. Yeah, it's a bit strange and I hope BYD will fix this in a software update to give you a proper normal trip meter. But anyway, Let's get to the first update. Um, I have done 15% state of charge and on that 15% I have done 68 kilometers. Pooh, what is 100 divided by 15? That is seven, a bit over seven, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. So 65 to 70 times seven and a bit, yeah is around 420 kilometers. I think even a bit more than 420 kilometers. And I have to say though, the car is really, really efficient at these speeds. The average consumption at the moment is 13.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers over the past 50 kilometers. So yeah, again, this car is really efficient when driving these speeds. It is really impressive. Besides that, comfortable seats, good driving position, adaptive cruise control, the car is quiet. Yeah, I can cruise in this car for hours with no problem. But yeah, that was the first update. As it looks like right now, we can do more than the WLTP range. Very good BYD, very good, I'm impressed. Anyway, I will keep on cruising. Yeah, gone is the perfect range test because apparently in the east of the Netherlands it is raining. I looked at the weather forecast for this evening and I thought it was going to be dry in the whole of the Netherlands. But apparently, well, as you can see, apparently not. And I was doing the perfect run because in the west of the Netherlands it was 19 degrees, there was no sun. I mean, I am not even running the air conditioning. It was going to be a perfect run and now it's ruined. But... It doesn't spoil the fun. No, I will keep on cruising. The car has used 25% state of charge and on that 25%, I have done 106 kilometers. So that means I want full, 
a one full charge, still 424 kilometers. Spot on, even a little bit more than the WLTP range. Very impressive, Eto3, very impressive. Alrighty, still going strong driving west where it is not raining and where it is 17 to 18 degrees instead of 14 degrees. You really notice the consumption going up in the rain, the wet roads. I had to turn on the climate control because I was getting nippy. You really noticed it, but now again, everything is great and perfect again. The car has used 50, no, 40% state of charge, or 40%. And on that 40%, I have done 165 kilometers. So yeah, 420 kilometers of range still. So that also means that the state of charge scale seems linear. Very nice, very nice. But still 420 kilometers of range on one full battery. Again, still impressive because it is a WLTP range and the conditions are not perfect, perfect because if it was 25 degrees, then it would be perfect. So probably if you drive in 25 degrees, you can get even more, 430, 440. And that is more than the WLTP range. Yeah, very good. But I will probably keep on driving and the next update will be at the charger. All right, so I arrived at the charger after my 90 kilometers per hour test. So here is the result. I started the test with 81% state of charge and I arrived at the charger with 24%. So that means I've used 57%. On that 57% I have done 238.9 kilometers. So you can do on a single charge in these conditions 419 kilometers. That is spot on the WLTP range of 420 kilometers. And I have to say that is an impressive result. I had pretty good conditions today. Not perfect, but in better conditions than I had. I am sure you can exceed the WLTP range of 420 kilometers with this car. And again, that is impressive. The BYD Auto 3 is an efficient EV. Of course, in winter you get less range. The Auto 3 does have a heat pump as standard, so that should help with winter efficiency. But you probably get something of 375 to 400 kilometers of range. So yeah, well done BYD, well done. So that was the result of the 90 kilometers per hour test. Now let's get back to myself in Germany, where I am doing the 130 kilometers per hour test. All right, I'm going to be honest with you, and that is that I am doing this 130 kilometers per hour test in Germany and not in the Netherlands like I normally do. I am in Germany at the moment. I did a top speed range test before this. That is another video. So now let's do 130 kilometers per hour range test. This car can do that with no problem. There we go. And while charging after the top seat range test, the car rapid gated. The battery was very warm, so hopefully the car is not cooling the battery too much while I am doing this 130 km per hour test. Yeah, hopefully it will not do it that much, so it will not influence this test. It was probably better to do it the other way around. First the 130 km per hour test, then the top speed range test, but it is quite foggy outside and I wanted to do the 100 or the top speed range test while there was still daylight because well it is safer to drive with a higher speed with daylight, duh. Anyway, 130 km per hour range test. I have to admit this car at low speed is crazy efficient, but doing a higher speed it is way less efficient, so I have no idea how much kilometers this car will do while driving 130 km per hour. The car is saying at the moment that it is doing 37 kilowatt hours of power output. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I think this car will do around 250 kilometers while doing 130 kilometers per hour. At least I hope the car will do that. Okay. Again, it is very foggy as you can see. That is the reason why I did not want to do the top speed range test tonight. 
and I will keep on driving and then, well, I will see you in another update. Alrighty, time for the first update while doing 130 km per hour. It is pretty dark outside, as you can see, but the headlights on this car are pretty good. The car has used 25% state of charge and under 25% I have done around 26, no, not 26 kilometers, 56 kilometers. So that means a range of around 220 to 230 kilometers while doing 130 kilometers per hour. I expected a bit more, if I'm honest. It is 11 degrees, so maybe in summer, yes. But I expected a little bit more. The consumption at the moment is around 26 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's it. Uh, nothing else to say, really. No. Oh yeah, for some reason the steering assist doesn't work. I don't know why. I can turn it on, the cruise control is on, so I turn on the steering assist. The function setup must be completed. I have no idea. I don't know why it's not working. So at 169 kilometers per hour, the cruise control isn't working at all. And higher than 130, the steering assist can't work. Something like that. A bit strange if you ask me, but well, it is what it is. Anyway, I will keep on cruising and well, see you in the next update. Yes, indeed. If you paid attention, I am at the exact same spot as I was after the 90 km per hour test. I am not in Germany for you to give the result. But I have done the test in Germany. That is true. I am just not there for the result. Anyway, I did the 130 km per hour test and I started that test with 80% state of charge and I arrived at the charger with 7%. So that means I've used well, up 73%. <laughs> On that 73% I had done 163.8 kilometers. So you can do while driving 130 kilometers per hour and the conditions in Germany were basically the same as today. So around 18 degrees Celsius and barely any wind. 224.4 kilometers. The average consumption was 26.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And I have to say, it is still pretty efficient, but the Eto3 loses its efficiency a little bit on higher speeds. It has a drag coefficient of 0.29, which is not the best, so that doesn't help. But I also have to say though, I also did a consumption stretch of 50 kilometers in Germany uh, during the day. It was 22 degrees with sun, so it was warmer. Uh, still barely any wind and then I got a consumption of 23 to 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and based on that in that in these in those conditions that is correct word in those conditions then I could do 250 kilometers but 250 to 60 is the max while doing 130 kilometers per hour maybe 200 in winter and well in spring fall somewhere around there 225 something like that so yeah again the auto free is a efficient car at lower speeds it loses its efficiency a bit on higher speeds but still in general it is an efficient ev and i like it so that was the range test of the byd auto free i hope you liked it and if you did please subscribe and give a like and if you want to leave a comment and then I would like to say now thank you a lot for watching and as always, to be continued.